Hey, that shit on TNT. Today I'm here with King, man. How you doing today, yes, brother? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm out here, man. You know what's going on. We at the studio right now. You know what I'm saying? Make Way Studio. Um, recording my, my newest project, Dope Boy Diaries. We already got like five songs in. We, we, we grinding right now. You know what I'm saying? That's what's up. That's what's up. I already know my favorite track from the project, though. I already told oh, you, right? Sure. We ain't gonna speak about that, though. <laughs> we ain't gonna speak you know about I mean? that too much. You so feel so me? You got the behind the scenes. Though. Exactly, exactly. So, so the vlog is dropping, too. Like, you guys should just stay tuned. It's shit's hectic right now, you know what I'm saying? But a hustler is always gonna learn how to adapt to the environment, you know what I'm saying? So we're working with it, we're getting through it, so yeah. And uh, just like talking about your state of mind and everything, I've heard you stopped drinking, so like, what's the, what's the whole thing behind it? Yeah, just taking a little break, you know what I'm saying? Like a, l a little cleanse, I like to call it. Every, every first of the year, I like to take a month, two months off just because I really be drinking, so you know what I'm saying? But it feels good, clear my mind, get a lot of, a lot of work done, you know what I'm saying? And, and yeah, state of mind is good though. And uh, like what have changed from your morning routines because like I know you're the Henny Papi, you feel me? Like you're oh, always with sure. the Henny bottle. Oh, sure. So always. like just like quitting like your whole vibe of Henny. So like well, how do you replace that time right now? Um, when I'm not drinking, I'm just, I'm just writing. You know what I'm saying? So even when I was drinking, I was writing, but I'm more in a, in a, in a party kind of mindset. You dig what I'm saying? But now it's more and more just writing, just working. You know what I'm saying? So it's more work. What's the first thing King does when he wakes up in the morning, man? Fuck, first thing I do when I wake up in the morning, I go brush my teeth. And the other niggas, stank breath niggas, need to go do the same shit. You know what I'm saying? That's the first thing I do when I wake up. You dig what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah, brush my teeth, wake up, you know what I'm saying? Make the bed, all that good shit. And, uh, and I just uh, get on the road from there, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, like, usually, like, do you have, like, a morning routine you follow first in the morning just to get your mind right? Or you just, like just wake up you know do your thing and get out of the house yeah just just get out of the house it's not really a routine it's it's whatever like you know what i'm saying like the phone rings i go outside that's that's pretty <laughs> much it you know what i mean i hear you i hear you so like uh what uh before i start even going about the whole drip and like the whole family and stuff so i'm just seeing like a bit of ice over here like oh, you gotta yeah, show yeah, the yeah, people yeah. come on come yeah, on hold man. on hold on hold on you gotta show the people like so got like vvs vvs all over we i, don't I do see that, that i see that mean? So like you gotta tell a bit of people like what's the mindset behind the eyes? Is it just is it just to flex or is it just like more like it's it's like like tell the people man. Um honestly like it's always been a thing for me like when I was younger and seeing seeing the older guys with, with the gold on, you know what I'm saying? When I used to see them I used to always want it for myself. So it's more like not just a flex for me, but it's more like something that I always wanted from when I was young and when I had the opportunities to get the gold and, and the ice and shit like that, I did it. I grew up in Mississauga. I was born in Mississauga, Ontario. Um, grew up there. Uh, dad wasn't really in the picture. Uh, mom held it down for me and my bro. You know what I'm saying? Um, we grew up over there. I moved down here when I was about 10, 11 years old to uh, to Montreal. And um, yeah, the early life for me it was it was cool. You know what I'm saying? It was it was rough at, in certain aspects. You know what I'm saying? But my mom always made it work for us. You know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, man. Um, one big change that I've seen from when I first moved down here was the, the language barrier. Like, I came down here not speaking a word of French. Still don't, still not too good with the French. I'm trying to pick up, you know, but uh, the, the French was a big thing for me. Um, also, like, I don't want to sound like fucked up or anything, but racism is a big thing out here, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, there was a lot of minorities in, in Mississauga, Toronto area, like um, the classes were filled with um, black, Asian, uh, you know what I'm saying? All different kinds of ethnicities in the school. And when we came down here, me and my brother, we were the, I think we, there was two other black kids in the school that I went to. So it was a big change. It was a big change in like fitting in even just like that, you know what I mean? And uh, just talking about school, like, so uh, I know we spoke a little bit about it. So, like, yeah. what kind of student were you? Like, I was, uh, I was a, a good student, surprisingly. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
I wasn't like uh, the class clown or none of that type of weird stuff, you know what I mean? I used to be quiet in class, but uh, I got busy though. I definitely, <laughs> definitely got busy, like, um, you know what I mean? I used to get in a lot of troubles, but I used to try and do it outside of school, you know what I'm saying? Like, in school, I would try and focus on the work or whatever, even though I missed, missed classes here and there. I dropped out at like, uh, at like 16. I hit the streets early, you know what I'm saying? But in school, I tried to do my best. Didn't want to cause too much trouble there, you know what I mean? And uh, so how do you explain that the good kid is like in the streets? Like how did the transition happen? So honestly speaking, like even early age, even in high school, sec one, sec two, shit like that. Um, I got it. I was involved in a lot of trouble. You know what I'm saying? I, I like to, at an early age, especially I had my eye on that. Like I used to always, I, I wanted money. You know what I'm saying? That was the, the big thing for me. So wanting money at an early age you kind of get and, uh, into trouble you know what i'm saying so yeah like and just as the older i got i i like to dip in that dabble into into more and more trouble as i got older you know what i'm saying but uh yeah pretty much and uh, like so far like do you feel like there's anything you could take back from uh, your youth um a couple of mistakes Definitely, definitely a couple mistakes that I made in my past, recent past and past when I was younger, you know what I'm saying? But I like to I like to keep in my head that everything that happens is a part of God's plan. And if I change something then, then I wouldn't be the man I am today. So I don't like to uh, to focus on the mistakes I made in my past because that's who, what made me, you know what I'm saying? Smoking it just was never for me, you know what I'm saying? Like when I was when I was a kid, 12, 13, 14, I was smoking all the time. Um I ended up having like one bad spliff and it just turned me off from the thought of smoking, you know what I mean? And um it was definitely beneficial for me because I didn't spend my money on weed, you know what I'm saying? But um yeah, it was just it wasn't really for me. It wasn't really for me. Don't get it twisted though, I still, I love all my weed smokers, you know what I'm saying? All my best friends smoke weed, you know what I'm saying, so. So like, you don't just smoke, but you have nothing against people that smoke? Nothing at all, no. Nah. Ah, respect, respect. So well, my next question, we're going to go a bit into your family, since like you told me like your mom was the one holding it down for you. Oh, for sure. And uh, how many siblings do you have? So I got about three brothers, and I got four sisters, but most of them are, well, all of them are stepbrothers and stepsisters on my dad's side, except for one. I have one little brother that um, that I grew up with and that came to Montreal with me. Okay, okay. And uh, how's the relationship with like your whole siblings and everything? Um, with my little brother that moved down here with me, we're mad tight. We speak, we pretty much speak every day. Uh, I feel like uh, I like to think of myself as like a family man, so I keep a, a good uh, connection with him, my mom. Him saying my grandma, I go see them every Sunday, try and talk to them as much as I can. Uh, for the rest of my siblings that live in Toronto still, in Mississauga, I try and keep in contact with them. With the quarantine, I haven't got to see them that much with everything that's going on and shit like that, but uh, I, I talk to them often, you know what I'm saying? Wanting to be a rapper, I could still remember the, the first song I made. You know what I'm saying? I was, we were on our way from Toronto to here when we were moving from Toronto I was about 10 11 years old and um, I think it was like just around the time I was listening to the 50 cent album get rich or die trying me and my brother were really into that and from there I just we just wanted to try it out so we got a paper and just started writing you know what I'm saying and from there I never never looked back I just kept on going with it and I like to think of myself as one of the better rappers in Montreal now you know what I'm saying? So, and uh, with the whole competition, because I feel like uh, when I listen to your music, right, it comes more with that 2000 and aggressive flow compared yeah, to like sure. what the youngings right now are like into the whole drill, the whole auto tune. Yeah, so, yeah, you yeah. as an artist, how do you find that balance, like not to like fall in the wave? I like to. My f first thing I want to say is like everything that everybody else is doing, I can fuck with it. You know what I'm saying? Like the drill, the auto-tune, the melodic shit. I love all different types of shit. I still listen to it, you know what I'm saying? I still bump it on the daily and shit like that. But my, I just like my path, like the way that I rap, I like to think of it as 
like yeah it's old school but i feel like it's it's even it's different now because you don't hear rappers sounding the way that i do you know what i'm saying with the, with the like the hustle rap i like to call it you know so uh just i don't know what made me want to stay in this lane or what made me get into this lane but i just you know what i'm saying this is just what i'm sticking with so i respect that and also like uh, what are the artists that had the most influence uh, in your career like while you're growing up like the people you get inspired from yeah um so i'd start with with 50. not my favorite rapper but definitely big influence on the way that i rap and who i was first listening to when i was younger um my favorite rapper is jadakiss um and a couple other dudes got were influenced and that influenced me was like uh, newer niggas like Dave East, um, Jay Z. I read books on his biography, discography, all that type of shit. Um, and yeah, dudes like that, like mostly New York artists. I got a, I got a big influence. We don't have a release date yet, but it's definitely January. It's definitely gonna come out end of February, early March. We're trying to do it pretty quick um because i have i already have next projects in mind but uh dope boy diaries coming real soon that's the main focus right now you know makes this one different from my last one my last project was called chronic and cognac and that project was basically just like the name chronic and cognac so weed and and hennessy that's you know what i'm saying what my life revolves around most of the time but um what makes this project different from the last one is I'm actually going more into detail about stories about my life and, and shit that um, that you guys could really grasp onto and, and kind of understand more about me because I'm going more in detail now. My main thing is nowadays I feel like everybody wants to be a rapper now. You know what I'm saying? Like when I started about 10 years ago, I didn't feel like, well, more than 10 years ago or whatever, 12 years ago, I didn't, I thought it was cool, of course, but I was doing it because it was something I liked. And nowadays I see a lot of people that are doing it just because it's the cool thing now or they think um, it's, it's going to benefit them in a certain way. But if you don't love rap itself and you don't love the music itself, then I suggest you don't do it. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not... To me, it's, it's never been about a bag, you know what I'm saying? As you can see, a nigga get the bag regardless. Don't forget that. But um, it's never been about the money to me for this shit. Like, I love doing this shit. This is something that I love to do. I always will do, no matter if I never get a dollar from it, you know what I mean? So definitely a uh, word of advice for anybody that wants to become a rapper or is a rapper, your heart has to be in it, that's for sure. Um, fuck, I like, I like moving around, you know what I'm saying? I like going to, uh, Holt Renfrew. Um, you came with me the last I'm time. I'm witness, I'm witness. He dropped like seven you know Gs in a day, bro, you know, in less than two we, hours. We I play, saw that we shit. Don't play, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, definitely Foot Locker. I like fucking with Foot Locker. Um. And, uh, just talking about sneakers, like, what's your favorite pair of sneakers? Damn. Uh, I'm big on sneakers, definitely big on sneakers, but um, my all-time favorite would probably be the Cement 3s or the Cement 4s, or even the Concord 11s, J's. And uh, talking also about money, like, I was on the ground, I saw you, like, holding a 100k cash. Damn, so, damn, like damn, <laughs> damn, damn. <laughs> It wasn't 100k, though, it wasn't 100k, it was about, it was about 50. I don't you know, know but it was uh, looking, it was looking fresh, so, like, fresh, what was the, what was the yeah, point yeah, about it? And yeah. after you drop a, a whole video about money, so yeah, it was yeah, like... Yeah, 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 um... I'm a hustler, man, I'm a hustler, <laughs> man, no matter what it is, I go get it, you know what I'm saying, so... I, I like to keep my, my focus on the money, no matter what. That's that's number two. Family first, money second. Oh, yeah, you dig what I'm saying? And yeah, man. And uh, yeah. how much, like, what's the most amount of money you spend in a day? In a day? I don't even know, man. Damn. Like, <laughs> seven, eight grand, maybe, ten grand. I don't know. Something like that. Something like that. Something crazy. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, me and my girl been dating for about f almost five years, and um, yeah, been in a relationship, and and it's it's helped helped me out a lot. You know what I mean? It's kept me on kept me on my p's and q's, kept me focused. You know what I'm saying? Um, if your if your girl's not helping you, 
get to the bag, then you're most probably spending it on her. The older I get, you know what I mean? Like, I've, I've had my fun back when I was younger, you know what I'm saying? 17, 18, shit like that. Like, I, I, I enjoyed myself as a kid and, and did all of that shit before when I was younger. So as I get older, it's like, it's not really about, don't get it twisted, my girl's a good looking girl. You know what I'm saying? Real good looking girl. But it's not about how good looking the girl is to me, you know what I'm saying? It's like, what can we do to better ourselves? You know what I'm saying? Like, what's your mindset like? What what do you do on your spare time? You know what I'm saying? And a lot of these a lot of these females don't have much to offer. Not to sound judgy or anything like that. You know what I mean? But a lot of these Instagram girls, if you have a conversation with them face to face, they're not saying much. You know it gets I mean? dry. It gets yeah, dry. Yeah, definitely gets dry, and it, they definitely don't have goals. Like you ask them their goals, and they're gonna stutter. They're gonna tell you, "Oh, uh, I want to be famous on Instagram." We ain't into all that. You know what I mean? and, yeah, man. Just like, um, just like building, building with with a girl, and able to talk to her about problems that I'm going through, and she can help me out with that. You know what I mean? If if you can't if if you guys can't have a good conversation, it's just not really going nowhere. You know what I mean? That's for sure. Damn, you seem to like know your way around women. So like, give a bit the youngings like an advice about the women. Like so like all these niggas out here simping on this on these hoes on Instagram. Just like me, talk me. to them, talk to them. Honestly, honestly speaking, um, that simping shit ain't cool. That simping <laughs> shit ain't cool. You know what I'm saying? I I can't really respect it. You know what I mean? But. Uh, <laughs> If if you do find the right girl, then do all the simping you want. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yes. in, in my eyes, if if you're with a girl, that girl's with you, and you guys are down for each other. You know what I'm saying? Like, like my girl gets whatever she wants. If she wants something, if she tells me she wants something, even if she doesn't tell me, and I know that's something that she's interested, I'm gonna go get it for her because she's she's gone and got it for me. You dig what I'm saying? So. Simping is, is in in a way like if you see the girl on Instagram and you 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 see like she's getting attention from a hundred niggas, you know she's not the relationship type. I don't understand what you niggas really have in mind and what's really going on. You know what I mean? But uh, if if you find the right girl and you see that she has the right morals and and she's helping you in a certain type of way, then then go for that. It's not you know what I mean? That's that's the main focus in my eyes. We used to have uh, Island Vibes in um, in um, Saint Laurent, Covert Sioux area. Favorite restaurant used to be there every day. You know what I'm saying? But uh, my nigga Rob, the owner of the restaurant, he actually he actually moved, so uh, he's not there no more. But besides that, um, restaurants in general, probably like a Baton Rouge or a Madison's. Mm -hmm. I like to go go to those two restaurants because I like ribs. You know what I'm saying? Um, if we're talking about the hood, I'd be everywhere. I, we just had the uh, Buffalo Bills. I don't think it's even there anymore, but I seen the Buffalo Bills in the hood. I was fucking with that. Um, KFC, you know what I'm saying? Hell yeah, hell yeah. Uh, Camdo too, Camdo, bro. You got, you got to shout Camdo, out Camdo, bro. Camdo heavy, niggas, <laughs> niggas is hating on me when I say Camdo no, talking about rat style. Like, I'm like, oh, bro, Camdo oh, has been feeding niggas I'm fucking scenes. Camdo, like. man. That's for sure, that's for sure. A couple other spots, you know what I'm saying? But uh, we had an MTL star booming. Um... Yeah, man, a couple pizza shops. Yeah. Hold up. Oh. Uh. Yeah. I bag hoes, bring them to the crib and make them bag O's. Half holes, got a nigga stuntin' on you assholes. Get these grams sold, going hard until the trap close. Jan knows, these rapping niggas got some whack flows. I'm getting Becky at a telly in a bathrobe. Sick boss, think a nigga had a really bad cold. Ten racks and twenty dollar bills, it can't fold. Act bad, I bet I have you killed. The strap blow, I was on the block with a zip, trying to get a buck. Naughty bitches on a nigga dick, pockets swelling up. Please don't act a fool, I'm off the goose. Nigga is better duck if I ain't got the two call my goons wish the best of luck uh hold on hold on I think I got a bit more not nah, like you 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 coming hard man you coming hard yeah. like off the top off the top off the top man no written hey. shit no hey. phone on his hand 16 O's in a duffel bag 
Selling all this dope then got my mother mad I'm a cocky young nigga, yeah I love to brag Riskless, red hoodie and I got the color flag Damn, I'm still chopping the reefer Tell my doges what to do and they gon' follow procedure Dreams of copping a beamer, taking shots by the leader I'm on the block to get this guap, you on the block for no reason Facts my punches known to get these niggas toothaches Known for squeezing like a nigga running out of toothpaste All these bitches know a nigga ball, fuck a 2K Have you pussy niggas caught for guard until you lose faith You ain't no goon and I bet that I could get you gone Think you cool until you notice that your necklace gone I done sold more food than a restaurant Niggas think they flex, DMX, let's get it on Bars, besides a pack, that's all I really have Like the same color of what you see when you peel a scab Shoot him in the back of the head and I bet I make him dab Big some gator niggas so much shot you should've took a cab Fast <laughs> You know Y'all heard the man. Like, Y'all heard the man. Like, off the top, off the, off top, the top, man. man. Come on. Off the top. All these new rappers. I cannot write. I cannot write. <laughs> I, I cannot rap without writing. Come on. I'm Y'all ready heard to go. the man. That's pretty much everything for today. Mm-hmm. And uh, probably we're going to have a part two somewhere in the summer. Definitely, definitely. And uh, follow the boy. Follow the boy, King K L V G, on Instagram, Snapchat, and on Facebook. Um, follow my cameraman, Plus Thoughts. You know what I'm saying? And follow my engineer, Golden Child. I'm saying this is what we're doing. Dope Boy Diaries coming real soon. Be on the lookout for that.